To kick things off um, on this Pat Phelan special, we're thrilled to be joined by the man behind the monster. It is friend of the podcast, Connor McIntyre. Connor, welcome back to Conversation hey, Street. Hey, guys. Lovely to see you both. Yeah, Lovely to hear you both and see you both. I'm actually, just to let the listeners know that we're actually doing a FaceTime, so I'm actually looking at these two beautiful <laughs> creatures as we speak. And just so that listeners know, he is wearing a hat. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, Gemma? It looks very sharp. You, cool you've got a very cool summer outfit yeah. on today. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> so, um, congratulations first on your recent win at the British Soap Awards. Very well deserved that uh, that best villain gong. Thank you. Delighted. And uh, I mean, uh, and up against some, you know, some fine actors as well. So really nice to, you know, to finish my time off there with uh, uh, with an award. Yeah, mm. great. And hopefully, you know, uh, hopefully. Uh, uh, played a little part in you know what's gone on in the last 12 months so yeah delighted absolutely yeah, delighted. Yeah. yeah how would you uh, how would you describe your experience that evening um I'm, I'm, they're very nervy uh, occasions always i think but the fact that it was live and it was 20 years and mm-hmm. um, but i was i was fairly i was fairly relaxed it was you know great to to be there with uh, all of our gang. I mean, they're just to get together with your peers, you know, and everybody else that works in this particular uh, idiom, you know, uh, because it is you, it is unique in many ways. Soap is unique in many ways. Yeah. It goes, mm-hmm. you know, like a train, and on the Wednesday, you know, you can be divorced, and then by the Friday, you'll be married <laughs> and you've adopted three kids. You know, that's <laughs> kind of the world we live in. Uh, um, so yeah, a great, great get together, and great to see all the other uh, great actors from all the other shows. So really, is a you know a get together, and to celebrate all the hard work, not just by because it tends to be us guys the the front, and we get the applause, and we get to say you know thank everybody we grew up with, and all of that. But behind that, of course, are you know with a great team of scriptwriters, great team of directors, and mm. all the crew. Yeah, you, you know just. Um, and they're so nervy, you, you kind of always leave somebody out. But, you know, the crew on Coronation Street, they're such a hardy bunch, you know, that stuff out at the lighthouse. Oh, you right, know, yeah. four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you know, minus ten, you know, we get big coats to put on. And, of course, it's cold for us, but they're out there all the time. The sound, the lights, I mean, you know, it should yeah, be so, a, so a, a real uh, heroic award for them. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so a, a really lovely evening, yeah. Really you got good. such a warm welcome as well, didn't you, from the fans? Yeah, how lovely! <laughs> yeah, really nice welcome. I was quite, I was quite, uh, I was quite touched by it actually, mm. because you know you, you expect an all plus, but there was a real, uh, there was a real warmness, real yeah. funness, you mm. know. And, and I, I, I guess helped by the fact that we'd seen him kind of go tonight. Yeah, before. that's true. So you know, it was kind of goodbye as well, but it was very touching. Yeah, yeah. very touching. And they knew that they were safe. <laughs> from you. Yes, yeah. I thought I'd better reassure them from the stage and say, okay, guys, it's all good now. You can relax. <laughs> he really has gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had the body bag moment. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. That's the yeah. saddest part. <laughs> <laughs> Final. Yeah. Um, did you get a chance to speak to Brian Capron at all when you were there to share notes about your villainy? I had a great chat with him and what a cool guy, what a cool guy. And I missed an opportunity to meet Brian at the Christmas party for whatever reason, I couldn't get there, but he was there. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, so I, that would have been a great uh, uh, photo, but we, 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 you know, we got the photo, photograph taken uh, yeah. together. And I had a great chat with him, he's a very cool guy, very nice guy. And of course, an iconic villain, you know. So, uh, um, yeah, very proud to be in that kind of company, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he was very, uh, very modest and uh, and very cool. And of course, in the background of the photograph that you guys took, yeah, there in the corner, on steps, he's there. I mean, it couldn't, have, it couldn't, have, you couldn't have set it up better, could you? No, you know? <laughs> no, 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 it was great. Yeah, really nice to meet him. Very, very nice guy. Yeah. So the, the yeah. day before the soap awards, we'd we'd seen Pat meet his sticky end, the hand of Anna Windass. What was what was your reaction when you heard how the final week would play out? I thought it was uh, great. I thought I, I thought it. Uh, I thought it squared the circle. Really, it all came back round. Pat was subjected to things he'd kind of, you know, uh, made other people endure, yeah. and of course, it had to end up with <laughs> Anna, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Of course, it did. Poetically, it had to, because it all began there yeah. many moons ago, and, and, and through all the other kind of uh, episodes and adventures and uh, everything else. 
that's been the that's been that's been the one that's been bubbling away. You know, I've been the bane of her life for you know the last five years, so it had to end there. Yeah, yeah. We, great, we, thought, we yeah. did wonder whether she'd come back for that week. Yeah, so. you you couldn't not, could you? Mm, oh. that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was um was Pat always going to die at the end, or was there a possibility of him? going into prison and maybe coming back later i have no idea really no. you're not privy really to those conversations and i think i've said to you before on previous casts i don't really get involved with kind of going upstairs and kind of saying well what's happening with my character i really trust the writers and the storyliners because they've done such a great job so far so i don't really question that mm. i think on balance we've really ask the audience to come along with us we've really tested their patience at times when we've taken them on a ride full of uh, thrills <laughs> and spills and uh, you know so yeah. i think it was fitting that when the end came it was conclusive okay i, I don't think a jail or uh as much as i've you know would have loved to have been around there for a long time i don't think it would have been as satisfying yeah, the only the only thing that I think would have been could have been satisfying about prison sentence is if Nicola had died that evening, and then Pat would have had to have gone to prison knowing that he killed his daughter. <laughs> I, I I thought I thought it was a really, that was on you you posited that last week, didn't you? Yeah. I thought that was a really good idea. The only downside about that is that you wouldn't see Pat going, uh, uh, you know, dealing with mm. that. Yeah. what it done all you'd know is he's away somewhere so True. it doesn't quite it doesn't quite do yeah i think we had to see the lights go out for him mm. Mm. we had to see that zip uh, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but before that that week happened we kind of assumed based on publicity and everything that pat would kind of come to the street on his own volition yeah. that he would like have revenge on eileen uh, and we were quite surprised when gary was finally able to overpower him and, and bring pat back as a hostage Did, what do you think pat's plan was when he was hiding away in the caravan i mean was he going to swoop in and steal the baby or whatever or what do you reckon it's a good it's a good question and i think I don't think it was about uh, uh, stealing the baby necessarily, but here's what I think. I think this whole saga started started with a really poor decision. So Owen comes to Pat's house looking for money. Pat says, I haven't got any. Mm. So him and Gary decide to break into Pat's house and steal his prized motorbike. Mm. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah. Then, they lock, then they locked it in the builder's yard. So from that very poor decision, started all of this so this path hiding out in the caravan seemed to be quite content that he's under the radar for the moment yeah uh, and he's keeping some control about what's going on through the kind of you know uh, uh the the social media yeah. keeping an eye on nicola and the progress with the baby and then another really poor decision <laughs> the guy decides not to call the police and say he's here but yes. to bring him back to the street. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> so, in, in, in the tradition of soap opera, you know, one bad decision on top of another, on top of another, leads to absolute chaos. Mm. You know? Yeah, absolute chaos. It's interesting that you mentioned your first scenes because a little bit later on this episode, we're going to play some yeah. clips that we recorded for the podcast like, four and a half years ago, which oh, is our, oh, our oh, first great. first reactions to Pat. Oh, so, oh great! <laughs> I hope yeah, that yeah, you'll, yeah. you'll look forward to hearing that later. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. been an interesting journey as well, hasn't it? The, yeah. the reactions to yeah. Pat because the way that the, uh, and the storyline developing, and uh, I was uh, I was doing a uh, a bit of a chat with. Um, a magazine for a piece they're, a piece they're doing and uh, and she was saying oh it's just when those bits of humanity broke out in him you're really rooting for him mm. and saying okay we'll forgive andy we'll okay we'll sort yeah. of forgive michael uh, just just draw back just just don't do that don't make the next bad decision <laughs> that you're about to make yeah. so yeah. uh yeah so I mean, our, our, our viewers and, uh, and the listeners to the podcast have been great in terms, and I, and I know at times it's frustrated them, but I think uh, in the end, the payoff was worth it. It came full circle. And yeah. what a ride. What, you know, what a trip. <laughs> yeah. what a trip. Mm. Well, let, let's talk a bit more about this past year of Pat Feeling, because mm -hmm. last time we spoke to you on the podcast for episode 250, um, mm -hmm. you were just about to start filming uh, your first scenes with Nicola Thorpe. Um, right. What, what, uh, what, what's it been like filming with Nick over this, this past year? 
But she's fantastic, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, oh. she is. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And, uh, uh, you know, mysteriously, like, these things work. Um, I did her screen test with her. Mm. You know, so obviously she was fantastic with that. So fabulous. But, uh, I, I mean, uh, 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 and so she's just grown right here. She's, she's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And, right. and, now, and now she's gone. She left Coronation State well, on Wednesday night. I, don't be surprised if you see her back, though, will you? Oh, no, <laughs> we, would, we would love she's, to see her uh, back. Co Corey's very good. Don't forget, I had a two-year gap. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, people talk about me being on the show for five years and say, hasn't that gone quickly? Well, <laughs> the first thing was six months, and then yeah. there was a, you know, I, I went back and finished my Masters, and, and then they called and said, do you like to come and do some more? So I've got no question. Should, 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 she, should she still be available? By the way. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, no doubt, because there's a lot, there, there's a lot, there, there's a lot to explore. There. There's a great relationship between, you know, Nicola and Eileen and Seb. You know, all these things mm. have all, all, all those foundations have been set. Yeah. So, and the baby, of course. Exactly. So there's always be, been, a, always be a link. There's a windass feeling uh, baby. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. what were some of the favourite scenes that you had with Nicola? I, I'm probably not the best person to ask if from the point of view of going, oh, I thought that was uh, that was a great scene or I did particularly well. Or, they, or, or But the one scene, the one scene that springs to mind, which really shows Nicola's qualities, um, by the the lake in the park. I knew you were going to say that. That's that's one of my favourites too. Well, well, even more interestingly, halfway through the scene, this thunderstorm starts hmm. i mean lightning and thunder now the sound guys have got these booms up in the air they're like conductors for electricity so there's no question <laughs> they have to put every, they have to put everything down oh. so we have to abandon the scene halfway through now of course it's such a big scene we can't reshoot the whole lot duncan foster was director hmm. so we had to come back on another day I think it was six or eight weeks further up the road <laughs> and shoot the second half of that scene. You'd never you'd know never, by watching it, would you? You'd never know. No. No, uh, and that, that, that speaks volumes to, uh, 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 to Nicola's quality. There wasn't, I couldn't see the joints. So no. No. from that point of view, that's, that's one of my, one, one of my, uh, one of my favorite scenes because, you know, we managed to, we, we managed to pull it, pull it off really. And it, it was a very, you know, it was a very rich scene anyway. Mm. It was yeah. full of, full of, uh, but she's just great. I mean, you know, um, with, with, with actors across the board, you can have scenes uh, with people that are very small, seemingly insignificant, but they're very uh, satisfying. The scene with Steve in the taxi office, Mm. over the cakes the buns you yeah. know oh. I mean, you kind of like seeing but one <laughs> of my favorites i mean he's just such a he's you know he's a comedy genius he's brilliant you know? yeah uh, uh, and that that look you know that look on his face at the end when i've gone is just you, you know <laughs> it's just great so but, but but there are lots of those and I, i'm very fortunate in the in the fact that i got to work with most people i got some interaction with yeah. uh, with with most people you know mm. So, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Um, but going back to Nicola again, an another yeah. good scene was one of your final scenes together in Eileen's house when you just, you know, come to the door, you had the gun and you wanted to see baby Zach. Do you, do you think that Pat would have gone through with his threat and shot Nicola to get to the baby or was it an empty threat? I mean, he was pretty desperate at that point. I mean, it's worth bearing in mind that Pat's, Pat, Pat is bonkers. Mm. <laughs> You know, you know, do you know what I mean? He he he, he can make bad decisions in a, in, in a second. I don't think that was his intention. But I mean, my feeling was when we, well, my, forget, no pun intended. <laughs> but my, my, my feeling was that he takes rejection very, very, very badly. Yeah. So he felt betrayed by them all. So Nicola was no longer the apple of his eye. That's not to say that he would have killed her in a heartbeat. But it was about his legacy with the baby. Yeah. And I think at the moment he decides to go down the street rather than leave uh, the street. He thinks, I don't care what happens from here on in. Yeah. I just want that second or couple of seconds with uh, my grandson. Yeah. Almost like, a, you know, an exchange of some kind, uh, you know, mm. okay. Uh, 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 okay, I'm passing the baton, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But just those microseconds with him, and of course, 
in order for that to happen, Nicola has to be okay. I think that's the reason he took her over to the bistro. Mm. Yeah. I love that moment where you broke into the bistro with, <laughs> with her in your arms and you could yeah. see on Pat's face how yeah, yeah. desperate he was. Like, yeah, Help yeah, me. yeah, yeah. He yeah. suddenly, if the penny suddenly dropped with him that actually for Zach to be okay, you know, yeah. Nick's got to be okay. So. Mm. Yeah. So what did yeah. you think um, about Pat's kind of descent into becoming an actual murderer when he finally shot Andy? That yeah. was a line that he was unwilling to cross before. Yeah. How do you think he got to that kind of mind space? And how did you feel I, about that transformation? I think what I think what happened very quickly in the scenes, or, or you know, sometimes you, the, the, the scenes kind of go on, and right there you can, there's an impulse that you feel and you go, oh, it's a real thing. In the sense, sorry, it sounds very uh, pretentious, doesn't it? You, you all, all of a sudden really understand then the motivation in, 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 a, in a very short space of time because what happens is, okay, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. So he sees in that moment how easy it was for that problem to be solved. Mm. Right. And very quickly goes, well, I've got one of the problem, <laughs> and and I, 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 as I remember the way, of course, we've got no control how it's edited or how it's tightened up. And believe you me, we shot an awful lot more than you saw oh, there yeah. because they were very conscious about how close to the edge they were getting. Right. Um, uh, and so, he, uh, for, well, after we've gone through the rehearsals, of what we know we shot, and I said, oh, I, I see now. He sees the solution to his problem in that action. Because I don't think that was his intention to shoot, to, the, to get him to shoot him and then shoot Andy. Mm. I don't. But I think in that moment he realised, <laughs> oh, well, yeah. may as well get hung for <laughs> keepers on, you know, you know, yeah. two's as good as one. And I've solved both problems. So, it, it, again, another, uh, another passage and another really poor decision. Yeah. yeah, it kind of made him think he was a bit of a god and uh, untouchable. Even when he was talking to Eileen at the lighthouse, he was saying, oh, yeah, I, I'm pretty good at killing, actually. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah. I found out I was good at it, mm. is what he yeah. says. And, that, of course, that leads on to what I suppose I would say, from my point of view, was the most shocking one, and Luke was the most shocking one. Um, yeah, those, those driving scenes when you were chasing after Luke, that must have been so yeah. much fun to film. But, yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. So, what, tell, tell me a bit about how that um, kind of uh, was put together. Well, uh, uh, again, we end up back at the mill. So to do the other scene, I get a tea and Kelsey, Ollie fans, but you know, two really, oh, and we, we, you know, me and me and Ollie did some really, I thought some really great work. Bearing in mind that it, you know, we, it goes like a train. What we do, it really r runs like a machine. But both committed to that stuff in a cellar, and they're really kind of oppressive. You know, if you're really horrible to somebody and you're, you're raising that kind of uh, adrenaline and energy, you know, for four or five days running, mm. it's kind yeah. of... Uh, I, I, said to, uh, I said to Ollie one day, um, I hope your girlfriend doesn't shout at you over the weekend because you're probably just going to break down in tears. <laughs> um, uh, and Ian Kelsey, of course, is just a great actor and a very, another very cool guy. So blessed to have those. And then, uh, you know, to go with Dean, so we go back to the mill back to the scene of, of where the murderous thing started. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we've got to be, we've got to be driving there, but you know, the whole tone of the conversation, I could almost feel the audience going, just walk away, Luke, <laughs> yeah. just leave it. Yeah. But the lovely thing about that character, I mean, he was, he was, he, he was spotless in a sense, well, he was unbesmirched, wasn't he? Yeah. You could argue Vinny was a villain and even, you know, Andy kind of came in as yeah. a, you know, yeah, exactly. uh, the duplicitous kind of a character, and his character changed and, and softened. But Michael was a burglar. Yeah, that's true. Michael was a burglar. Mm. He, yeah. he was. And so poor Luke, just after the truth, you know, just somebody going, something's not right here, mm. and I'm determined to get to the bottom of it. <laughs> and, but you could feel all, all the way through, you know, just let it go, just let it go. And of course, by that time, uh, 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 Pat is in, in murder mode and, uh, and thinks he can... <laughs> And of course, then you think Luke's getting away in the car. Yeah. yeah. So in we go, you know, driving around the site. Well, fantastic, isn't it, for us boys? So we've got gunplay, car play, <laughs> Jenna, you know, really. If, if we got Michael over there, you wouldn't see him for a month. <laughs> He'd be driving around. It was great, great fun, isn't it? 
yeah, yeah it was a really cool yeah. set of scenes yeah. that that one and then the end shot where poor luke's oh. in the car and pat's oh. like aiming and there's yeah. no escape yeah say hello to andy for me yeah 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 <laughs> really exciting stuff really kind of high drama yeah. yeah and there he is you know there he is in the car uh uh and you sort of go wow it, it was quite it, it was shocking yeah it was it was you know, to actually see that play out to see the car explode yeah mm. and you it's kind fun. of going oh and he's in there yeah you know yeah uh, yeah as great as a viewer as well because i don't think we knew that was going to happen did we no that hadn't no. been that one hadn't been leaked to the press a bit like no. um andy being in the cellar still oh that was so yeah. great although we said on the podcast we think you might have andy there just the, yeah, the yeah. moment no, when we I... said we said we hope he's got andy in a cellar yes. we, we thought yeah. that was too good to be true and we yeah. couldn't possibly hope to wish for it <laughs> and yeah. then it happened yeah <laughs> really love what kate oates did with keeping some of the uh, the big yeah. reveals a secret and I have to say, in defence, because I know it can be very frustrating for uh, a lot of you guys, and uh, um, sometimes they're able to keep it secret, and sometimes they're not. Yeah. Mm. You know, and and actually, it, 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 if there's uh, if there's a suggestion that the story is going to get out there, then obviously the guys want to lead, you know, lead with it. So, but they do try. The effort that went into keeping Ollie hidden. Mm. Out and from that set, you know, mm. you saw some of the videos in there yeah. under the blankets coming through the gates, and of course the speculation was out there. Oh, I, you know, I don't think Andy's dead, you know, for a while, so that was taking along. Mm. So they really, really put huge resources into into kind of keeping it keeping it quiet. But you know, the other guys, the Paps and who everybody else who's in and they're living, you can't like they're out there doing doing their exactly. thing. Yeah. But there wasn't a glimpse. There wasn't a glimpse of. Uh, there wasn't a glimpse of, uh, of of Andy anyway, so it was a genuine surprise, yeah. a genuine really uh, 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 shock. And the same when Anna, uh, when Anne Debbie came back, yeah, for, that, that yeah. was a couple of episodes as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. good, so good. Nice. <laughs> it's great. When, it's great when they can do it, and I, I, I'm fairly sure if they could do that every time, they would. Yeah. It's just sometimes it's it's just not possible. Mm. You know, people get the story ahead of time and still out there. You know. Mm. That was the same with. Um, the fact that Pat was going to shoot Michelle um, on, on your final yeah, week as well. Yeah, we yeah, we'd yeah, unfortunately yeah. heard about that like a, a month or, uh, or so beforehand yeah. and we were waiting in the week, when's this going to happen? And it, it did ruin it a little bit, but I mean, no. still, a, still, a, still a great week. It's something um, to look forward to. It, yeah, oh yeah, looking forward to Michelle <laughs> getting shot. <laughs> And of course, you, you should have course, aimed a little bit higher. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and of course, there are things like you know, uh, you don't know just, uh, 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 how that kind of information we got. But when when you know somebody's staying for another year, or yeah. or you see you see photographs of scenes that are shot four or five weeks up the road, then you mm, know you know those yeah. characters are going to be around. So so you kind of lose the tension. But they, on the whole, uh, they do very well. It's almost impossible these days to to keep it under wraps. So yeah, any exactly. any of those ones that were, that that, that we can, uh, mm. and they're real payoffs. The audience really enjoyed them. You know, the real mm. shock, real shock and surprise. Yeah. So so after um, Luke's death, the main mm -hmm. scenes that we remember from from Pat's time was the the drowning in cement scene, or nearly drowning in mm -hmm. cement, mm -hmm. and then also nearly drowning off Whitehaven. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how how those were filmed? What that was like? It looked cold, both of them. Very cold. And I think it was cold porridge rather than cement. <laughs> but again, I mean, if, uh, I, I, I'm, I am, I try to be, uh, one of those cup half full. And you, when you see a whole crew out there, middle of the night, freezing rain, all to produce the drama. You know, great. I, I just like, fantastic. I say, all, uh, you know, just to uh, 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 cheer them up along that, I say, all you guys out here for me. <laughs> yeah, all for you, Connor. This is all for you. I said, all these lights are all for me. They say, all for you. I said, come on. Oh, <laughs> no, I don't. And uh, you know the the whole dragging the bodies thing up. It just, I oh, mean, yeah. just grew, just great drama. Yeah. You know, and bearing in mind where we are, the kind of idiom we work in, you know, that's that kind of stuff is as close to any drama that's that's kind of, that uh, that was on. A very dramatic stuff. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Very dramatic stuff. Mm. Yeah, so I get I get all the fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kato said to me at one point, oh, "Now, what else can we do to you? <laughs> you know, we've ne we've nearly killed you, we've nearly shot you, we've thrown you over, well, we've buried you in concrete." <laughs> and of course, 
<coughs> Whitehaven was was uh, oh we oh we don't call it Whitehaven it, it wasn't Whitehaven in the program so the lighthouse if you will mm. yeah uh, really out there on a limb really uh, cold and beautiful you know the Coronation Street had come to town so all those beautiful people on Whitehaven turned out in numbers mm. to come and see come and see his filming down on the boat. And then uh, we were lucky enough, we got, you know, got, uh, got a bit of time to have a chat with them and get some photographs taken. It was great, but hard, you know, hard, hard work. But again, I have to say, you know, we are, of course, we have to deliver the scenes and everything else. So we get looked after and uh, warming up. But the crew out there from, you know, all the way through, from, from when we start to when we finish, four o'clock in the morning, bleak, freezing. And I just want to say, that is me hanging over the edge of the wall. Wow. And I'm terrified of heights. <laughs> but, you know, um, everybody was saying I never heard a whimper or a whine. So I thought, well, the least, <laughs> I, can do, well, the least I can do is go and get terrified hanging over that wall. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All yeah, of those yeah, yeah. No, it was quite, quite a drop. And, and, and uh, uh, shout out to the stunt guy on there. So he goes into the water. So yeah. I've got wow. to see this, of course. Now he's been my stunt double for, although he's always delighted because he said, well, you do most of your things anyway, so well, I won't be doing this. <laughs> um, he's straight off into the water. Now, I don't care how many, we've got a rescue boat down there. Well, you'd be amazed at the personnel there to, you know, yeah. make sure everybody's safe. But still, <laughs> this yeah. kind of <laughs> leap off, uh, into into the void, so to speak, into the kind oh of God. freezing cold Irish Sea. You, those guys really earn their money. Yeah. Really earn their money. Mm. Uh, yeah, an incredible guy. Oh, do you know? What? I'm ashamed. Actually, his name's gone off the top of my head. So that, we'll, was, we'll that, find... that was that long drive last night. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll find <laughs> it out and say it later. So yeah. when when the scene where Pat's falling into the water was that mm. you like against green screen wire work and then it was the stunt guy it, going into the water? It's, or? it's a mixture of both. When you actually see the the the, the you see me falling in and it is obviously me mm. for, uh, hitting the you, you know dropping yeah. off the wall and yeah. hitting the then it's my it's my face superimposed on. Oh. on I him. see. Ah, you with me oh, for yeah. that for that drop. But the hanging over, again, we shot an awful lot more than you would see. Mm. But you see a long shot away. That's me hanging over the wall. Wow. That's me actually on the wall. So you I mean, it was, did they have it was, you strapped in and like, did you oh, have sure, sure, harnessed But you just like, we still had to hold on. Oh my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. But well, it's got to look like you're, you, oh. you know, of course, and you're up there and the wind is blowing past. I don't know whether you, whether you, you saw, there was literally waves of uh, uh, hail coming through these big lights that because they're two decommissioned lighthouses but it looked like you know movie set mm -hmm. but just these waves of kind of rain and hail oh it was just God. i mean it was fantastic you know any actor any actor in any kind of uh, 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 work doing any kind of work to be able to work in something like that is it's, it's a privilege and real you know real effort and real resources put into it so absolutely fabulous yeah now yeah, you, you, you talked earlier about meeting some of your fans at Whitehaven and we've actually yeah. got some questions uh, coming up soon from some of our listeners who, who want to know a bit right. more about Pat before we get to that though can you tell us a bit about the importance of your relationship with the fans because you really do seem to have gone above and beyond to interact with them during your time on the street yeah and it, to be honest with you it's not because I'm particularly a nice guy or I think it's <laughs> I think it's part of I think it's part of what it is now, and um, everybody, generally speaking, are very respectful and they're and polite, and they're, they're in the show and they're invested in the show and invested in the characters. So it's been great. And somebody asked me, uh, and I thought it was a bit of an odd question. Well, don't do, uh, it's for an interview. Someone saying, don't you think it's a bit odd that? Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of a lot of women who kind of seem to like Pat. Don't you think it's a bit strange? I thought. <laughs> oh, well, I, I, thought, I, I think I remember saying. I think your question's a bit strange. I said, but I tell you what, I do notice is the the creativity that this forum has brought to the table. Mm. Centers around feeling. <laughs> well, are you, are you with me? The conversation yeah. around feeling, the fans or not fans, but has generated such. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'll give her a shout out. Now, Shelly Ann, for example, <laughs> who does all the videos. Yeah. yeah. You know, Rachel as Corey Poems now. Yeah. All these okay. things generated from this. And I, you know, I'm, as you know, I'm an artist myself. So I love to see that kind of stuff. But 
the exchanges have been made and um, I was very very uh, moved by a video that uh, Shelley Anna put together with a few of the other guys and I hope they forgive me for not uh, remembering the names did a video thanking just thank him in it was a, like a like a member's Facebook video mm. to say you know thanks for for Pat feeling through through that the storyline and through the Corey thing I've met a whole new bunch of friends yeah who I who I, who I you know who I care about and, and, and now we interact outside of, you know, of Coronation Street. So, mm. and you guys, you know, met you guys uh, 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 through that interaction. Yeah. yeah. No? And then we get to go on the street together. And yeah, I mean, yeah, these, yeah. Are, these, are, these are real things. And, uh, and yeah. now, like I say, you're, you're kind of on the firm now, aren't you? People, <laughs> you know, the guys that currently know you and, uh, uh, you know, kind of enjoy the show. So it's, uh, yeah, it's great. The fans, let's cut to the chase. It's all about the fans. It is. I mean, that, that's, that's, it's that's all about the that's views. What makes the TV show, isn't it? Yeah. It's make, what makes it all it. about the views. All about the fans. Which is why, I, you know, I made a real effort to thank them the other night. You know, mm. outside there, they turn up and, and yeah. come all that way and spend lovely messages. You don't, you just don't get a chance to catch up with it all and thank them all. So I can take this opportunity, can't I? Yes. Go Everybody that listens to the podcast, thank you so much for coming along for the ride. It's been amazing and interacting with you guys has been amazing so absolutely it's all about you guys thank you right, yeah. let, let's get on with these questions then uh, Gemma do you want to ask uh, this first question okay, what was Morgan? Morgan we've got Morgan's wants to know about Pat's capacity to be a good guy and whether yeah. you think he could have gone over to the good side Morgan good question and I think definitely I think one of the things that gave Pat some longevity is that we all thought that that was a possibility mm that we all thought there was a dimension to him uh, that was good and that uh, he could draw back from his, you know he could not he could not always be a victim of this pathology yeah that you know that uh, um, uh, but the darker angels of our nature always seem to you know run the game for him so yeah but definitely had the potential to be you could see it there you see his interactions with summer mm. you'd see yeah. the interactions with eileen you know yeah. you'd see uh, even with Billy, even when he's being kind of, you, you, you know, uh, what do they call it, tough love with Billy. It was, I always read that scene as an act of compassion. Yeah. He wants yeah. to scare the life out of him and say, listen, if you, you know, if, you, if this comes around at another time, I'll come looking for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, so just in an attempt to, because he says a couple of times in quiet scenes, no, I, I like this man. And uh, myself and Dan have often talked about, uh, another lovely actor as well uh, I've often talked about the small scenes that me and him have had seemingly insignificant but there's a couple of times that Pat has been on the verge of confessing if you will yeah. to Bill mm. either in the Rovers you know saying something like uh, um, if you only knew the half of it yeah. and you almost see him on the verge about to and then we got interrupted phone call or whatever but so there's always that capacity and of course he goes to church one time as well doesn't mm. he yeah. trying yeah. to trying to shift it you know trying to move it but yeah. he can't he also try he also says carla doesn't he he jumps in front of the car yeah, oh, yeah, yeah when yeah, he first yeah. came back yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone forgets yeah, yeah. that i haven't forgotten no, no. that <laughs> yeah through, through his chip lost the yeah, chips, through his chips. Said, yeah absolutely yeah, you... so so i think that's what made, I, I think that's what i think that's what made him human I think that the relationship that they put between Pat and Summer was really important for that as well. There, there yeah. are a few good, really good scenes between uh, between yeah. you and Matilda yeah, that, yeah. that just went, go, went to show that he he did care for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, th those were uh, they, those were glimpses into a possible other life. Yeah. For Pat. Mm. Yeah, I think. You so. know what I mean? You could see yeah. another possible future there for him as a granddad. You see. Oh, you know, if only things went that way, it could be this because, you know, yeah. So sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Fiona has asked um, along the same kind of subject. What do you prefer playing, though, a good guy or a, an evil guy? Fiona, thank you for your question. Um, there's, a, there's a saying, isn't there? The way is easy for those who have no preference. <laughs> um, I think if you get if you got given the, a character like Pat Phelan, and he was a good guy, he would be a, be a delight to play, the way the guys have written him. Uh, as a bad guy, he's a delight to play. So I, I, I really, without it being a cop, I, I have no preference. It's, 
I really rely on the writers a great deal. I gave them, I, I give them most of the credit because if it's not in the writing, then it's not, it's not there. So, I think Bob Mitchum, Robert Mitchum, used to say, "I do two types of acting: with the raincoat and without the raincoat." I think that's what I suppose is with the horse or without the horse, but the right. same thing. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One so, no preference. I'm, 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 I'm happy to be. Uh, I'm happy to be in where. You know, so really exactly, not exactly. I think um, with Pat though, one kind of like is spice for the other, you know, because the the good side when you're watching him being a good guy, you it's always kind of like seasoned by the fact you know how evil he can be, and vice versa. Yes, yes. that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one reflects against the other. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, we've got one from Pete about Eileen. He says, do you think Phelan actually did love Eileen? <laughs> the big question this one, isn't it? I thought he was being deliberately hurtful when he denied this to her face at the end. My view has been that he did love her, but in his own narcissistic way. I I, 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 I can care with Pete's thing, because when it's such a horrid thing uh, he says to her. Yeah. But I think he's wounded Me. and very interesting with that kind of pathology and that kind of narcissism. When they do get injured, the only thing they can do is to strike out yeah. again. So, I mean, there was no, there was no, uh, you didn't think for a minute that Eileen was in danger. You didn't think he was going to shoot her. You didn't think mm. he was going to hurt her. But he did want to leave her with something. Yeah. He was being spiteful. Yeah, That's he what was. he was doing. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I read that scene and tried to deliver that scene in a way that you, you know, he protests too much. Mm. You kind of go, yeah, yeah what you really, really want to say is, I'm sorry it all came to this, and you were the only love of my life, and mm. my heart's broken. Mm. It was really probably what he wanted to say, but he's mm. a victim of his pathology, so, yeah. you know, he wanted to wound somebody. Yeah. It's all pain for him, you know, at the minute, so. Mm. Um, Bronte wants to know what your last day was like filming on set. Was that quite sad reaching the end or did you have a bit of a, like, a celebration to finish off Pat Feenan's time on, on the cobbles? There wasn't a, a celebration. I opted to do something else. There's a, a, there's a, um, there's a charity there run by, um, I'm not a great party goer. I'm a bit of a misery, to be honest with you. Oh, I like bit me. of a home bud. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> so I, I opted to do something else instead. I, 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 I donated on behalf of all of us at Coronation Street uh, a sum of money to the charity there. Um, Calm, isn't it? Yeah. Campaign oh, yeah. For, uh, against living misery. So on behalf of everybody, oh, that's the cool. cast, the crew, rather than, you know, because, you know, like I say, I'm a bit of a misery in there. Everybody uh, appreciated that. So, and in terms of sadness, you know, we come together for, it's unusual to have a job as an actor that lasts for years and years. Mm. That's the unusual right. thing. This is very, this is extraordinary. I mean, the, the amount of time that some people have been on this iconic show, it's, it's quite unusual. So I think when you've got a few years under your belt, you realize that you're here for a short, intense period of time. And then off we go when it's, you know, you see them in 20 years, you go, hey, hey man, how's it going? <laughs> All good, you know, friends that you make, but it's not like where, you, you know, you're always in touch, we're off. Uh, doing something else and in terms of the final day you know everybody's off filming their bits but a few people came to see the final scenes because you know it's part and uh, uh, it was that so it hasn't hit me that yet it may well do mm. you right. know but uh, jo job done on, and I think it was the right time yeah. like I said earlier I'm delighted to stay you know for as long but I always said didn't I through interviews that we said I'll be here as long as Coronation Street have yeah. got a use for me. Yeah. yeah. And Pat will be here for as long as they've got a, a use for him. And it seemed a fit time. Yeah. It seemed we'd explored all the avenues uh, and taken it. A couple of false starts, you know, kept the tension going. But <laughs> it was the, it, it, the timing, the time is absolutely right. Did, I was just wondering about your last day. Did you roughly film things in the order that we saw them on TV? I mean, was the body bag scene the last scene or...? <laughs> Sorry, it, I know it was a while ago, a couple of months was, ago we, now, wasn't we, it? We, shot, we, we, we shoot so far out of sequence. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm just trying to think, was there another day? I think possibly there might have been another day, a short scene. Maybe not. Maybe I'm imagining that. So, But it would have been very close to the last scene. It's very unusual that we get the... Uh, the luxury of shooting in, mm. in, in, in you know, order, or yeah. we get to a certain pitch 
and then it's a little while before we film the other end of that scene, yeah. as it were, you mm. know. Um, but that's just the nature of what we do. It's part of the discipline yeah, of what exactly. we do. It's, it's part of the particular set of skills that anybody that works in this idiom develops. Yeah. Because if you're not used to it, it can be very disconcerting, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit like how you don't get the scripts for the episodes you're not in, isn't it? And you have to kind of piece together and work out what's, what's happened in between. And... Sure, sure, sure. Uh, right, so we got one from Adam. He said, if it hadn't been Anna who killed Phelan, by which other character's hand <laughs> would you have chosen Pat to die and why? Well, uh, it, it, uh, you know, there are so many, there are so many possibilities, aren't there? <laughs> some, some, some uh, you, 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 you know, the more obvious ones might be, you know, Gary, uh, uh, Nicola, Seb, uh, um <laughs> But what about somebody like uh, Roy? Oh, <laughs> he was what there. Wasn't somebody it? like Norris? Uh, what you know? Uh, you know, for it to come sideways, to come really out of left field. Mm. You know, that's somebody uh, that, that you, you know, somebody that you wouldn't kind of expect it from. Yeah. You know, and it just twist. happens. You know, yeah. it can be, it can be, it, it could be, you know, accidental or whatever. But and um, so I've had a lot of fun speculating with all of that. But of course. Uh, it had to be. It had to be Anna. It, it yeah. did really, didn't it? I mean, the after so everything you said, the so-called so. dec you know, decree. It mm. really had to be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rebecca wants to know, um, throughout all your time on Coronation Street, what's been your favourite storyline that you've worked on, or your, your favourite part of the Feeling Saga? Hi, Rebecca. Um, that's. Uh, re I seem to be fudging a lot of the question. I don't mean to. There are so many. It's it's been a, you know and I've said this ad nauseum people must be sick of hearing it but it's nonetheless true it's been an absolute blessing this whole thing to be given you know all the stuff we if let's go back let's go back to uh, uh, the beginning out out with Ian Paulson Davis and Mikey North out at the building site and all that stuff I mean they were just great mm. you know they were easy you know uh, IPD is such a great character he's a great actor and he's a he's a he's a friend you know I've really got a lot of time for him Mikey North you know great those they were great double act those two they were and I and I'm sure that Mikey misses him you know as yeah. he's get, he's getting on very well and doing his thing but they were great you know when this saga I, started yeah, I like them yeah out there out there at that building site was just great you know <laughs> generated all this that, that we're doing and now so yeah and then, and then sort of insinuating myself into Les Dennis's uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Michael Michael and Eileen's world if you will and the boys of course you know yeah uh, so yeah it's a really difficult question I, 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 I really couldn't pull one out I'm, I'm so grateful for all all, all the opportunities have been given, and all the storylines have played because that's because that's what they are. When you when you see something extraordinary, you go, "Wow, mm. great!" You know, let's see let's see if we can make this work. You know, yeah. I mean, let's you're going to be leaving with a lot of good memories, a lot of good friends. Yeah, of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much more than I'm much more than that. I mean, you've been in front of a camera. I've been in front of a camera. Uh, you know, uh, the, the best part of two and a half years. So, in terms of being match fit and yeah, yeah, <laughs> lots of great memories. And let's not forget, part of the fabric now of that um, iconic street. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I yeah, can't exactly. tell you how pleased my mum would have been with that. Mm -hmm. God rest the soul. You Aww. know, uh, uh, yeah. So, I, I'm, no, well, no matter what happens now. I'm part of uh, Cory folklore, Definitely. and I'm immensely proud of that. Immensely proud of that. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Jack yeah. has asked how playing Pat Phelan has changed your life. I mean, he's been one of the most iconic, controversial characters in Cory history. Yeah. How, how is life for Connor different now than it was five years ago? I, I'll, I'll tell him in five years. <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea. I've no idea how that how that impacts. Uh, uh, yes, I'm back to my studio. We'll see. Um, you know, we'll see what what happens there. But there's there's no there's no question about this. Whatever else you go on to do, you're always going to be past feeling <laughs> mm. You know, yeah. Uh, Hard one to uh, say. So, I mean, Brian Capra and still Richard Hillman, isn't he? Absolutely, I, 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 and he's done you know a lot of fine work since. But yeah. again, you know, Richard Hillman is such an iconic uh, uh, character. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Very pr very proud of that. Very 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 proud of that. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. We've only got two more questions left. Okay. Um, Giselle says, who inspires you? Ah, that's <laughs> our Giselle, isn't question. it? 
That's that's our Giselle, isn't it? Hello, Giselle. Hello, my darling. <laughs> she yeah, had loads of questions. Like, we, we had lots of questions from lots of people. We had to we had to yeah. pick out some. But yeah, she she had lots. But we wanted to know who inspires you as well. So we we picked that one. Yeah, Freya Lewis inspires me. You know the young lady we did the video for. The, the oh, um, yes. Manchester. The uh, the NHS heroes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That young lady. Mm. That's who inspired me. And you know our our award ceremonies are great and they're great fun. But I was at the NHS award ceremonies for 70 years and every one of those people that took to that stage, I mean, you know, they're inspirational people. Yeah. Mm. I mean, really, and every one of them, every one of them to a person said, you know, virtually everybody said, well, I'm not a hero. These people, my team who helped me are heroes. So those people uh, inspire me. Mm. And do you have a particular actor who, who inspires you out you know, on the stage or in front of the camera? Not, not really. I mean, you, you, you know, I'm in awe at the capacity some of them have to, uh, uh, you know, tell a story, deliver uh, 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 scripts, verbally or non-verbally. But inspire them? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I get inspired in the shop. <laughs> get inspired you know you meet people at the council who've got extraordinary stories you meet extraordinary mm -hmm. uh, uh, people everywhere and I have to say one of the real pluses about doing Coronation Street is you get to meet people for example the NHS uh, 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 awards I probably wouldn't have been there had it not been for yeah. the mm -hmm. invitations who come exactly. and by virtue of that I meet these extraordinary people they're yeah. making an extraordinary contribution to their communities or society in general. It's 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 really quite humbling. It puts everything in place. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and 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 that's by virtue of having some you know recognition or association with with, with Coronation Street and just people I've met in town. You know, talking and uh, you ask them what they do and uh, you know just the most extraordinary tales. Yeah. yeah. yeah people people are amazing uh, uh, with all the bad stuff and we hear enough about that. But uh, you meet some extraordinary people and I've met some extraordinary people here in the Twitter sphere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Giselle's wonderful. <laughs> inspirational character it's all about inspirational characters so our final question uh today is from mary who just wants to know what is next i mean have you got other projects on the go can we look forward to seeing you on the screen in future I and mean, obviously we do have the pantomime to look yeah, forward to at the end of the year that's, a, that's immediately next but um for anybody who's for anybody who's self-employed anybody who's in the in the arts and who's an actor you know the general thing is that we don't know what's you could come out of fear and things get very busy or they they, they may not so mm. i've learned to relax a little bit more about that let let my guys do their do their work mm. and um i gave it all all my effort up here so we'll see yeah we'll see what can, happens. You, can you just tell us a little bit about how this panto is going and, and was it les dennis's was it who was it that came up with the idea of you two it's, being on stage? It's it was les a, dennis's wonderful yeah, I thought, thought claire, so. claire has mm. some time Claire, Claire, uh, so uh, as Les tells it, as I remember, uh, and they were at a show and Claire said, wouldn't it be great if they could get you and Connor um, something? And I think it's uh, uh, something that Kudos had done over the production company that do the pantos. It'd be great if they could get you and Connor. So Les sent the, uh, uh, the person he knows, it, Kudos, a text. And he showed me the text of the week saying, you know, this would be a really good, interesting pairing. And of course it is, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, we can't wait. We cannot wait to see you two back on stage. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I suppose it's a bit predictable there uh, in terms of, oh, you know, of course he's, a, he, he's an old hand at this, so we'll be very much in, <laughs> uh, in his world. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Very much looking forward There's to gonna it. There's going to have to be quite a few Cory references dropped into the script, I think. I think the audience are going to bring that anyway, don't you? <laughs> yeah, uh, we certainly there's will. There's going to be lots of shouts. He's behind you again. <laughs> I'm <God>. so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. listen it's I been so so lovely speaking to you today Connor just thank we you. want to say well done for everything you've done in Corrie yeah. you've been one of our so favourite characters ever best thank villain you, ever on Corrie yeah. and it's been such a treat to be able to, to speak with you again this evening to about your final reflections on Coronation Street thank you thank you guys well listen it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you two I'm a huge fan of the podcast i think you guys do a great job <laughs> i think you are a bit of a dynamic show yourself and lovely that we could meet in this context yeah. yes 
So um, we, we might not be um, in touch about Coronation Street, but I'm sure we'll stay in touch. And I'll always tune into the podcast, so I'll be keeping an eye on you. <laughs> and um, you. just a big thank you again to all, all the listeners, yeah. all the viewers. Thank you. It's all about you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you've enjoyed it, and I'm glad to have been a part of it. So Thank you. Bless you guys. Thank you. Bye, Connor. Have a, have a great summer. We'll see you at Christmas. <laughs> thank you, guys. Have a nice summer, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.